world and lonely lately mm-hmm. We've been trying just to make it through everything mm-hmm. I feel so out of place, feel so, feel so out of place right here Who's up for a lock-in? against Scotland this weekend and uh, I've hidden my Liverpool scarf because that was horrendous as well but don't worry because we've got a pint with us and we're here to make you smile and drown our sorrows. Welcome to Stephen Tom Blocking. What's up with you? I'm still bitter aren't I? Oh yeah? I don't mean that, that's not bitter, that's case. I'm, I'm bitter because you're lucky I'm here, can I just say you're lucky I'm here this week because this man here Right, supposedly trying to do me a this good turn. T- t- supposedly, man. yeah, supposedly trying to do me a good turn this week. Nearly ended me up. I nearly up in turn. I was nearly uh, uh, in um, <laughs> on Her Majesty's what do you call it? Not Secret <laughs> Service. Detained on Her Majesty's pleasure. Right, because right, I, can I tell a full story? We're on the wrong side. I, we're on the wrong side of the law. And almost, we're here to make people smile, Steve. I, I know, but that's why I need to get this off my chest right now. <laughs> Right, and clear the air. I'll tell you, exactly. We were in this very pub this week doing some filming for this very edition, right? And, right, I happened to mention how I had to make a trip this week, essential trip to Peterborough. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous, essential and Peterborough. Yeah, uh, trip yeah. There, the, the armpit of the UK. The armpit of the Currently UK, Currently voted right. the worst place in the UK to live. The exact same place. <laughs> Sorry if you live in Peterborough, but uh, pour yourself a drink. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you offered, very kindly, I, said, I thought at the time, you said... Look, I've got an app on my phone that might get you a cheaper ticket. So I said, well, the best I can do on my phone, on my app, is 76 quid. Seems very steep to go to the arse end of the country, right? 
So which you piped up, well, according to my phone, 26 quid, Steve. Twi I went, well, you do know. you mind if I borrow you've your phone? It, you've got it. So you very kindly booked the ticket, right? <laughs> it wasn't until I got on the train that I realised the ticket you booked me was for someone aged between 26 and 30 with a rail card. <laughs> I, I, that was quickly pointed out to me by the conductor. <laughs> it was a Geordie guy, and you know they don't take any, they don't take any hassle, do they? There was no way I was going to... It gonna, was an honest mistake. I, was, I got the ticket there, you need proof. There's the ticket, right? <laughs> I went, well, I'm sorry about that, mate. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to see your official, can I see your original documentation? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I went, I haven't got any original, I, I cowered, I did. I, I went all <laughs> timid and weak. I went, I'm afraid, I'm afraid I haven't got the original documentation, officer. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to charge you the full price. <laughs> That's 997. It was a lot of money, right? It was, a, it was, it like, was another 25 quid well, is what yeah, it was. Well, yeah, I'll give you exactly. still cheaper than your ticket. Yeah, it was, it was £24.90 it was. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So thanks for your kind offer, Tom. Listen, it's the last time I will trust you in anything well, to do with finance. <laughs> I, I can only apologise. But, as a result, I've been a bit strapped this week, so I've set up a very special giving page. <laughs> if you'd like to get me a coffee, please feel free to do so. If Here, you would like, here's the link. If you would like to buy us a pint, please, then sir. you can do that. If you're enjoying any of the entertainment that we've been putting out, if you missed last week's episode, it's still on our YouTube channel, so you can go and check that out. Thank you for tuning in today, and if you want to buy me or Steve a pint, you can go to that website below, yep. And you can uh, just chuck us a fiver I was going to or say, a tenner or you could buy us something off the top shelf if you're really feeling flush. Yeah, can I just say, you don't have to actually be enjoying the show. You, know, you can still donate. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I just like to throw that in there. <laughs> right? Even if we're not entertaining you in any way, please give generously. <laughs> right, we've got the begging out of the way. Can we yeah. make people Let's feel better Let's forget about now? that. I feel guilty even asking. Oh, we should ask. We should dear. ask. Because we've got a fun, fun pack show anyway. We have. We've got loads to look forward to and uh, we want to get through it as quickly as possible because um, we've got loads to do. So We need cheering up, Tom. Who's we all need cheering up because, frankly, you know, we're all going through tough days, good days, bad days at the moment, and so we're here to just bring a smile to your face at the end of the weekend. I hope you sat at home on your sofas, either with your family or with somebody you, you love or just maybe your pet, or you're just cuddling up to a nice drink, yeah. be it something alcoholic or not. But uh, we're I'll, here to bring a smile to your face. So I'll tell you who else always brings a smile to my face. Father that? Christmas. No matter what time of year it is. <laughs> Absolutely, and we found it. Have a look at this. On the high streets. Oh, it, so if you recognise this high street anywhere, then maybe you know that Santa is out there just giving it, giving it a shit. Look at that. Listen to me move now. Watch this move now. Watch him. Watch him. Look at that. God, sunshine. Isn't it makes you wonder why he had the stick. I love the nonchalant way that cyclist just goes past. But how cool is that fella? That was uh, a little video that we saw this week and just brought a smile to our face and uh, we're here to bring a smile to your face with all the different things that we've got planned this evening. So before long we're going to bring on our celebrity guest landlord. I'm sure that you've seen who that is if you follow us at all on social media. So we want to get on to him as soon as possible because we know when it comes to his stories... They are fantastic and we don't... There'll be no stopping him, to be fair. There'll be no stopping him. There'll be no stopping him. We can flip him go on. So, uh, without further ado, what we want to bring on is... Um, last week, we asked you to search in your phones and send us your favourite pub pictures to remind you of the good old times of when we were all in the pubs together. So, we've got a few of them that we're going to bring up now. Now, it seemed that a lot of them were uh, people that I know or people who sent photos of... Me and them Basically, in the Basically, you accost a lot of people in pubs, don't you? <laughs> Basically. Yes, you, you go to people's Even set. if I don't know them, I go over and have a drink with them. You go, do you know who I am? Would you, you like might, a picture with me? Is might, that what you say? Is I that might, your Have I become that Geordie conductor? <laughs> oh, God, sorry, yeah. I, did say, right. I love this lady. How that excited is she? Lucy I don't Fallon's know. auntie. Oh, is it? I don't know. She, is she excited to pub? go and see Diana Ross, Jersey Boys, or Whitney Houston? <laughs> you decide. But she's very, very happy lady to be entering that bar or whatever. And there... Um, I don't know what went on that behind that private door, but <laughs> <laughs> we've got Rita and Mavis there on his T-shirt. He's obviously a big Corrie fan, so he sent us a picture of him himself and Sally. And that is the one. cast um, and crew of Calamity Jane there. So uh, that was a tour that I was on back in 2015. Can we, just, can we pause that one? How long is your arm, Tom? Is that a selfie? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to work that out. I mean, even me on a shot. 
<laughs> with my tiny head. Right. These these were all Can pre-COVID, just it? let's be saying, when we could all just stand still and just cuddle one another. Can we just saw what we, we, what you, we learned today in rehearsals. Oh, yeah, we yeah, learned yeah. that my arm length with yeah. a beer mat makes my head exactly the same size as a beer mat. I don't think many of you could do that. It's so only a tiny, length tiny away, beer mat as well. My head is exactly the same just size. Just hold it there. Just hold it there, mate, <laughs> for the next 45 minutes. Yeah, right, yeah. So what we want to do... Oh, Nigel Jackson. Good evening, everyone from Sunny Morecambe. Cheers to you in Sunny Morecambe. Mike and Nigel and Gail. So the, the chat line is open. Send us your highs and hallows. And if you've got any questions for our celebrity guest who's coming on in just a few moments, and please just fire them on through and we'll be able to see them. And uh, we want to hear from you. And one of the other ways that we want you to get involved is next week is a very, very special episode, isn't it, Steve? Yes, it's Because what love, day is episode. it? We are still going live on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Much to um, the delight of my wife. Yeah, just our say wives have kind so, of given us their they, blessing. They, they were so pleased to get us out of the house. <laughs> quite happy that. to bring us the, to biggest, the is, What's the, the ultimate gift to your loved one, isn't it? To get out from under their feet. <laughs> On the 14th of February, one day of the year at the moment, you can get out. So how can you get in touch with us and get for, with some content for next week's show? What we want you to do is we want you to go onto our social media. We want you to post the number one thing in your house that you love. Not the person. We don't want the person. We don't want the people. Well, if that, that is, is a, if that is your number one thing, then you can post that. But let's be honest. If we like tied our, our, our wives down, if we tied each other down and said, <laughs> "This is a whole new show," <laughs> Happy Valentine. Can I just ask, are we tying our own wives down? <laughs> where, where are we going with this, Tom? What? Can I just say, uh, my wife has been quite into the um, uh, to the the series, right? She's watched the, nearly every film now in the the series of uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Has she There's really? Three films, yeah. What she did? What? I tied her to the bed. Did you? Yeah, so she couldn't finish the final episode. That eventually she'll appreciate the irony of my actions. <laughs> anyway. None of us really knew where that was going, <laughs> we're did we? Not, you're all but what we want you to do is we want to send yeah. you to send us in a picture of your number one love, your first love, the thing that you love most. Now, Steve, what is yours? Oh, well, without question. And you, you she, and your wife share the same. We we both. Love, I think don't if you? it came to a, a split between me, you know, if it did get to divorce proceedings, we would have to write it. A bit like you are, you know, you have a pet, and there's always that very awkward thing. Well, he's going to take Rover. I want to take Rover. <laughs> I'll take over my dead body. You're taking. That's a very stereotypical. Yeah, but he's it's a not very a dog, is it? Man. Not a dog, is it? What is it? It's not a. It's a coffee. Coffee machine. It's your coffee machine. It'd be the machine. coffee machine, yeah. We, me and my wife both love the coffee machine, so that would be the picture I'd In our take. house, yeah, what would it, be? it probably would be the dog. Right, okay. We got a dog about a year ago. Her name's Lola. She's absolutely gorgeous, and we and, and she is just like, it's like a new baby. To, and you're about to experience this at the end of this month, oh, aren't you? Yeah, You've got yeah, a puppy coming yeah, into yeah, your yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, he's not, he's, and And if the dog comes to you and cuddles you more than the other people in the house, then everybody gets jealous. So... Who is it or what is it in your house? It might be your golf clubs, it might be your car, it might be your coffee machine. But we want you to send us in a picture on Twitter or Facebook with hashtag the hashtag Stephen Tom's, Steve Tom's Locking and then we will bring them up next week and we'll all have a right good chat about what it is on Valentine's Day that you really love. Yes. In the meantime, right now, it's the beginning. Well, to say the beginning, we're five, ten minutes in. It's time for the very latest news. It's time for Locking News. Here we go. Right. Now we're going to start with a real heart-rending story. So I want you to just Sorry. bear it's with us right moving. this moment because you. we start with some real heartbreaking news first. During this COVID lockdown crisis, up to 87 million pints of beer have been thrown away as a result. Which, you know, during all these pub closures, obviously there's been so much waste. Now that, that's the equivalent of 300 £31 million pounds in sales, or three times as much if you live down in London. <laughs> I see what you did there, Tom. Flipping I see what you oh, did like there. The, but then again, it's a waste of time buying beer down there, isn't it? Because they're all shandy drinkers. <laughs> yeah, what's the and point? And it's thin as. <laughs> in the meantime, a TikTok user has gone viral after showing users how they can make wilted vegetables, such as broccoli, good as new again. This young lady shows how the vegetable is wilted. She shows a picture of a vegetable that's wilted, looking a bit less than healthy, let's just say that, and very <laughs> floppy. 
Tom, keep listening to this because this could be help with your problem that you've been having recently. <laughs> anyway, to fix this, I don't think this will help, she simply places it in a cup of water. No, no, she cuts off the bottom, sorry. She cuts, puts it on a cutting board, slices off the bits of the stalk of the broccoli. She then puts the remaining broccoli in a cup of water and left it for an hour or two. And when she takes it out of the cup, the veg has regained colour and is much firmer looking. Which is totally the opposite of myself if I stand in cold water. It <laughs> certainly mean, doesn't get any firmer, Tom, let mate, me just say mate, that. You know Nigella, let's be honest. I mean, you don't make that sound as sexy and sensual as she would do if she was talking about that. In any way, anyway. shape or form. Now, they've got a breaking story in Liverpool. Oh, yeah. Um, now, a Liverpool woman has been fined £15,000 for hosting illegal Botox parties inside her home while in lockdown. None of her clients look surprised. <laughs> Think about that one. Think about it. It's a Botox joke for you. Botox, and it's not even true. And finally... <laughs> Name. John Humphreys. Occupation. Soon to be former quiz presenter. Yes, indeed. The 17... 77 year old <laughs> said <laughs> oh i've started so i'll finish tom thank you very much he said now after more than 750 shows it really is time to finish which gives me the excuse to mention when i i did the warm-ups quite a few times on mastermind oh that's why you wrote this in did you <coughs> yeah i wrote, this, you wrote in. this in so we can have a story of trip back down you, memory lane with you and john you will love this one though i mean he's an absolute legend isn't he john Humphreys, absolute legend but i also as well as doing the mastermind warm-ups, I also got to do the, the junior mastermind. Right? Now, I don't it's a bit more ever, on your level, that, I don't, well, it, well, I don't <laughs> even ever, they're higher than my level, I tell you. They don't even <laughs> ever seen the kids on junior mastermind. The best way to describe them is little... Anyway, <laughs> right. But there was this one particular lad, one episode, very posh kid, very posh, and he sat on that. I mean, to give you an idea of the age, we were about nine or ten. The feet didn't touch the floor on the famous black chair. So there was this little lad, and he, he sat, sat like that, and he looked at John Humphreys, he had no respect, because he, he didn't know, he's no, doesn't know who he is, does he, really? He wouldn't yeah. have watched Mastermind himself. But it comes to, between rounds, John Humphreys is interviewing this lad, and he says to him, and it says on my piece of paper, you're, 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 a very musical, you're a very musical person. And this boy goes, no, no, not really. You're wrong, you're wrong. Like that to John Humphreys. And John Humphreys says, but it says on my card here that you're from a musical family. He says, yes, it says, well, d Dad is a concert pianist. And you yourself are musical. He went, no, no. He says, but it says here that you play a musical instrument. And this nine-year-old kid just went, well, very basic oboe. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing my head off in the corner. <laughs> all I could think, all I could imagine is that kid. He must have gone to such a posh school. There's kids lining up in a corridor going, oh, bugger, double oboe next. <laughs> <laughs> Who learns the obo at school? But anyway, that's, that's my little, that's my amusing John Humphreys story for you, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I think it's uh, about time that we got on board with our celebrity guest landlord of the week. So we're going to head over to the bar area. And just before we do, we've got another little tidbit of advice for you from our very own survival expert, Keith Ives. Welcome to I Survives with me, Keith Ives. of made-up words. We can all make up words, William. Here's today's top tip. If you do have to teach, then remember, you're a supply teacher. Give them some colouring. Think outside the box. The classroom box. Shakespeare's box. Or rephrase that. Romeo and Juliet. It'll take you ages to read all that. Hours, even days. 
Nomeo and Juliet, same story, 84 minutes. Thank me later. Homeschooling. First and foremost, remember, you are the headmaster. Act accordingly. Find yourself a room away from the classroom and stay in it. More top tips on homeschooling next week on Ives Survives with me, Keith Ives. Cheers. Yes, it's time for us to welcome our celebrity guest Cut. landlord. Oh, hang on. on. What? Oh, Cut. Cut. oh, you are hang on. kidding me. How did he get in? Well, every, every pub has one, doesn't it? It's a fish oh, man. We're having it's a, a fish man. How's he got in? Cut. Fish man. Cock. 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 Cockles. Cockles. That's a relief. Cockles. Cock. Cock. <laughs> Cockles, anybody? <laughs> it's only Dave Flounder, the fish man. Hi. Dave, what have you got for us then? Oh, <laughs> I've got a load of stuff for you today. Have you really, mate? All fresh from Poundland. <laughs> <laughs> yes, got cockles, pickle, gherkins, no. Everything is co co Covid friendly. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a wipe. Wipe it down here. Do you like good gherkins? I do. I do like gherkins, Dave. Get yes. Your laughing here and oh, right. Come that. on then. Okay, you you can open that one. Then. I Don't will. I will. You. We've all got. What else have you got? I've got all sorts. You have to move, move with the times these days, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> move yeah. with the times. It's not not very. Um, Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, pickle, got, pickled mussels. I was thinking pickled you were going to bring us something fresh. I've, I've, got, I've got fresh. I've oh, got yeah. fresh. Yeah. I've got fresh there. Fresh, co pi fresh co pickled cockles. Cockles there. Yeah. Oh. Also, pepper armies. Well, that's not very <laughs> fish, friend. That's not fish. It's, no, but you, you have to, you, 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 the clients these days, you know, fish and beer don't always go together. I don't, I don't know whose idea that was. Look at fish that bad boy. Eh? Oh, 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 I feel like yeah. Hannibal on the A team. You look like the great Gatsby. The great Gatsby. I'll cut out. Don't talk after yourself, that's it. Hey, no, no, I don't know. I've also got a sideline going on. A yeah. sideline? Sideline. I don't know whether you remember last year. G G G Gwyneth Paltrow, she brought out a candle. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I do not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. The, yeah. the, is this the goo? Is this goo? The, 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 the candle was. <laughs> basically, he said, the, the, "This smells like my." V v v v v v <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We know yeah, which yeah, part. We got it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it did. I thought, well, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> How hard can it be? So <laughs> I brought out my own. Oh, oh God! No. This oh, what it no. smells like. I don't want no, my yeah. car. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your pickled cockles, <laughs> mate. Smells cockles. like your pickled cockles. Your yeah. cockles. My cockles. <laughs> now I've got some <laughs> cockle candle. C -c -can -c -c cockle candle. <laughs> I've got some candles here. Yeah. Now do not smell just yet. <laughs> Right. You have to tell me which flavour <laughs> you think these candles are. I mean, to be honest, okay. between Gwyneth Paltrow's yeah. and mine, you, you can hardly tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> now, I really I have, oh, these are really good. I have, I have, that one looks like pate. Now, the, 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 they do come with a certain flavour. Yeah, right. <laughs> And we got we've, we've got vanilla, I want you to identify. We've That's got, got vanilla. vanilla, warm apple. Whoa, whoa, you can't oh, go oh, straight oh, away, Steve. Oh, sorry, sorry. Just to throw you off scent, just so it's not too easy, yeah. you have to sniff it through a party ring. <laughs> <laughs> Simply, simply place a party in, and that's the other one I'll be touching. Place it on top and okay. sniff. What are you doing okay. to your party rings, Dave? They're, they're absolutely rabid. They've had a bit of a bashing. <laughs> <laughs> your rings have a bashing, has it? It was a high time. <laughs> right, I've got a Patrick, so I have to put them on top of the candle. <laughs> and <laughs> stick, them on, stick them on top of the candle, and you tell me what you think, think it might be. <laughs> I'm going coffee, mainly off the colour. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what flavours we have. We have vanilla, warm apple, sticky toffee pudding, <laughs> cherry bakewell and plum pudding. 
That is sticky toffee. That's sticky toffee, that's vanilla. Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you sniffing it through the party ring? Well, I'm trying, but they're all in... It could in, have been a coconut. In they're in tatters. They're in tatters. Oh, oh. Can I have a... Can I have a... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. that's that's very berry. What was it? What was it? You got you got plum pudding, cherry bakewell, sticky toffee pudding, and warm apple or vanilla. That's warm apple. You're correct. Yes. That warm, well I didn't done. smell the warm. Here apple. you've won a fish stick. <laughs> 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 They're no longer crab sticks, are they? No, no, you can't call them crab sticks oh, yeah. because <laughs> they, that 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 that. <laughs> there you go. That's a fish stick to take the wrapping off. Tree. Too. Oh, it has got plastic on it. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, yeah, treat that, yourself. That's categorizing. You, 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 you can't do I, that. I earned it. Have I earned it? No, you've not earned a fish stick. Well, I, I'm going to go vanilla Dave. for that one. Wait, 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 vanilla. Oh, congratulations, you've won a fish stick there. Dave, thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, come around a pot. It's the only Dave it's Flanders. Dave. Dave with these, with these the fish box man. of tricks. Remember, remember. You, uh, oh. <laughs> Keep yourself clean. Is that the high alcohol content? I've done, done, done the raspberry. <laughs> raspberry. <laughs> And and uh, just play, playing alcohol. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. get yourself out the back door Thanks, before Bob. the police come round. Come, come on, please. Thank you, dear. Dear, <laughs> come on. Dave. Dave, I told you to lock up. You didn't do the back door, did you? Hang on. Said if you don't lock up the back door, people come in. I'm having a crab stick. You introduce our uh, celebrity guest landlord. It gives me great pleasure to sit on bar taps. No, that's a bit too much gossip. It gives me even greater pleasure to welcome our guest landlord this week. It's only that there fell off the fast show cold feet and many, many other things. It's John, John Thompson! Thompson! Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who's our guest? First of all, John, take us back to that moment then. That, was all, that seems to us very recent, but when was that filmed? Um, se September. That was right. filmed in September, yeah, um, uh, over in Hemel Hempstead in London, and it was a heat wave. Uh, it oh. was one of those Indian summer type things they have down south. Oh, yeah, and, I remember um, it. We remember so it. So I, I had a foam latex costume. Now, but that wasn't just that, it was to give the shape of the body. Yeah. But that was also covered in fur. And on top of the fur was a baby grow. Oh. And underneath the foam latex was this <laughs> fur. <laughs> and I'm a northerner, so I'm acclimatized to the cold. Yeah. Oh, it, it was it was very, very, very. I, I read somewhere, I read somewhere that you'd actually strapped ice packs to yourself to keep you cool. Is that true? My wrists and the back of my neck. Because I heard if you put if you put uh, your, your wrists in iced water your pulse points, it takes your body temperature down. But oh. what you don't realise is when you rehearse the song, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you have to do it three times. And if you want to, the problem is now, if you want to put on a good show, you're making a rod for your own back. So the more you move about and dance, oh, yeah, the yeah. hotter you get. <laughs> but if you stand there like an ironing board, you're not <laughs> going to get the votes. Now, so, um, it was an amazing, uh, I mean, it was one of the f favourite characters of the show and it was, it was brilliant when you were revealed as it, but your, 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 even your daughters didn't know it was you, did they? Well, when the, I had to keep the whole thing a secret, but when it, the first show was broadcast, yeah, they were like, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> that, and I'm yeah, like, they? no, and I'm like, no, oh, no, no. And thankfully, there was a kind of a lot of a steer towards Matt Lucas. Yeah. There was yeah, a very big yeah. steer towards Matt. Um, there was one clue in it that was a potato. I was doing magic, and Steve knows that I do go to the Blackpool Magic Convention. But that's a side of me that not many people know that I do amateur magic. So, uh, But there was a potato, and I thought, why is there a potato? I thought it was like a curveball. And it was Max, <laughs> Matt's potato song, Baked song. Potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it was me, Len Spud in oh. Billionaire Boy. Of course. Oh, of course. We've actually, yeah, but at the very moment, clever. we've actually got the moment. Yeah. Oh, you don't, you, you, it's oh, the yeah. big reveal. Let's just show this. Yeah, this is. We've got the moment where your daughter saw that it was you.
Uh, I, love it. I love the fact that I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, but quite clearly they just didn't really know it. <laughs> was it? The, it was a massive relief for them because they were, yeah. they were, they were, they were, they were to, to quote, to name another character, badgering me quite a lot uh, about, you know, it is you, it is you, and I'd just kind of fob them off and change the subject and not try and, you know what I mean? But um, it was a different kind of. It was a. It was a lovely thing to capture that moment. I, yeah. I must say, but uh, it was. It, it was good fun. But it was very hard. It was like the heat was hard, and also it was like lockdown in lockdown. Yeah. So you're not allowed to leave your dressing room. Yeah. If you do leave your dressing room, you have to wear like a welder's mask <laughs> with a hoodie, with the words "Don't speak to me" on. Seriously. Over, over here. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, if a welder's mask and a hoodie uh, and black gloves so you, they can't tell your ethnicity on the show. And you're not allowed to speak to anybody. So it was basically, then you had your ear monitors in that were moulded uh, and there was, when there was no fear, no feed going through them, you were deaf. You couldn't see anything and you couldn't speak to anyone. So I jokingly said it was like a mild form of Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> Just really... Which didn't go down too well with the producers. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, we've got loads we want to talk to you about, John. So okay. we're going to uh, we're going to retire over to the table, and we're all going to have a right good chat. But I'm loving Dave that, Flounder, by the way. He's fantastic. He, oh, Love yeah. it. Ah, don't 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 it's be great. like that. It'll be in every. Oh, I used to drum in the working men's clubs, and there was always one of those guys. The cop was a muscle. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? They're always fish. Yeah, all oh, they used to be, and all the old ladies used to go. Show us your muscles! <laughs> and the bloke's face was... This bloke's face was a picture. It was literally this. <laughs> well, we've got you've got we've got anything that we could show of all of your back catalogue that loads of people have been asking us to see all the different characters and programs that you're in but there's one character that is steve's favorite and he's also one of yours isn't it yep. and so we're going to show a clip now as we uh, move yes. over to the table of it's all it's only mm -hmm. joe beasley joe beasley cheeky monkey enjoy <laughs> Very nice, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name's Joe Beasley, and hey, this is Cheeky Monkey, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, it's a great privilege to be here on the Alan Partridge Show, knowing me, knowing you, and I was thinking to myself in the dressing room, that's an Abba song, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? So here's a little joke, right? What do you get if you cross Fred Flintstone? Uh, no, not what if you cross. Uh, what do you, what do you get if you, um, what does a Swedish, what does a Swedish Fred Flintstone say? Yabba dabba do! No, he says, abba dabba do! Abba dabba do, that's what he says. <laughs> um, so then, uh, hey, other week, pack it in you. The other week, <laughs> stop it. The other week, me and Cheeky Monkey, we went to Blackpool Pleasure Beach, right? And at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I don't know if you know this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, but you've got the biggest roller coaster in the world. It's massive, isn't it? And we went up the big, up, up the big dipper. Oh, God. <laughs> we went up the big dipper. And uh, we're on the Big Dipper, right? And we're going about 200 mi miles an hour. 200 miles an hour on, on, the, on the Big Dipper. And um, we go on the Big Dipper, right? And we come round the corner. And Cheeky Monkey, right? He... And, uh... we get, we're on the Big Dipper, right? No. That... Oh, you Cheeky Monkey. He's made me forget. <laughs> it's his fault, ladies and gentlemen. He's made me forget. He made... Oh, he... Oh, he's always doing that, ladies and gentlemen. Me forget, forget, forget the joke there. Cheek, che, cheeky monkey, cheeky, cheeky monkey. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Beasley che, and Cheeky che, Monkey. Thank you. Hold on. Joe, I think you've been. I think you've been. Uh, I think you've been very brave. There's more jokes, That's, Alan. There's I, plenty I, I, more. It's, it's fine. It's that, just I, a little mistake. Don't think it, I don't think it's working. Just a little mistake. <laughs> I should, should apologise to Cheeky Monkey. Look, he's not he's upset. Look, he's not real. You've upset. Oh, look, he's upset him, ladies and gentlemen. Real. Don't touch it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've got a big problem. <laughs> If you've got any sense of dignity, this is well, your act is your act is really poor. <laughs> you, 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 if you've got any sense of dignity, you'll leave the stage. I'll make sure you get a round of applause. Now, come on, quit while you're ahead. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Joe Beasley and Cheeky Monkey. <laughs> Oh, oh, I love it. We cut just before mate. at the end there, John, <laughs> where you, you actually pick the monkey and just chuck it to one side. <laughs> yeah, you do. But look who's here. Oh, oh there he oh! is. 
Now, I'm not worthy. That, this is the one. That, this is the actual one oh, that I did word. on Alan Partridge 24 years ago. Oh, and that God. is Cheeky Monkey. Isn't that right, Cheeky? What's that? <laughs> he said he what? He said he don't like the lockdown. <laughs> why? Why? Why do you not? Why do you not like it? He says he's going bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you? Uh, they, then you always have that. Like, tell us. Can you just? I, I'm going off on one just because I love it so much. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> that character, kind of, that performance there. I mean, how much yeah. was written? How much was written? And how much? We're an A, B, and a C. We. We, we had a basic structure to go. Uh, the build-up was that he'd seen me at a whole season's holiday and I was absolutely amazing uh, in the intro. And, and the fact that he got his own TV show, he promised me that, that if I ever got my own show on TV, I would put you on that TV show uh, uh, and, and, and reflect the glory days of Cheeky Monkey when he was at whole season's. <laughs> <laughs> well, that had been some time. There had been a passage of time. And he'd, Joe didn't do Cheeky Monkey anymore. So, uh, but Alan wasn't aware of this. And uh, the, the beauty of it was, I wasn't very well known then. I was quite, uh, I think we just started doing the fast show. And what I, I, the beauty of it, I wasn't really a, a name or a face. The makeup, the, the tash and the wig helped, obviously. And um, the thing is, a lot of the audience thought Alan Partridge was real, let alone Joe Beasley. People, mums and dads would go, oh, I can't bide watching Alan Partridge because he's so rude to the guests. It's, uh, it's terribly rude. And so for, for me to go on, it was a brilliant, uh, it was a brilliant experience as an actor and a stand-up to die on purpose. So as a stand-up, when you get in the laughs, you get better, don't you? You're getting the feedback and it's like, it, it spurs you on and you'll ad-lib a bit and you're brilliant. Well, it works in the opposite way for me because the more I saw the audience look at each other and go, and go, what is this? I got worse and worse. And, I, and some of it was, that was totally improvised where the Velcro hand the, comes Oh, up. well, that was and a great held it. it. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's just beautiful. Moment. All that. The quiet, I just heard it then because I got the headphones in. When, when, when that happens, you hear him just very quietly go, oh, God. <laughs> um, it's just that thing and I love Steve's response it's like the most it cuts to the quick when he says your act is really poor <laughs> it's <laughs> it, it's heartbreaking to hear you know but I um, relished uh, one of the few times I'll say this I absolutely relished dying uh, on that occasion uh, it was a joy you know and it's still oh, funny when fantastic. I look back on it now but you haven't seen the end of Cheeky Oh, oh uh, come on. Here's oh, a bit of a scoop for you. Keep watch this space. Okay. <laughs> because have you uh, he, have you been introduced to Return? Have you been introduced to Monkey Monkey? Monkey Man Monkey. Monkey Monkey is something I I've took full advantage of the fact that we're in a um in a lot, you know, in the situation we're all wearing masks at the moment. Yes, and of I course. thought it's the perfect opportunity for me to do something I've always wanted to do, which is ventriloquism. So I, I created a character called Manky Monkey, and because of the mask, you can tell whatever you like. You can see my lips moving right, but normally the mask on, and Manky Monkey will say anything. And so we're getting Genius. messages now. So, so Manky, Manky and Cheek will have to meet up, meeting of the monkeys. I think, yeah. Is Manky a female? Uh, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't well, well, I'm, I'm saying, thinking like, about... I'm, I'm putting my I'm hand somewhere. I'm thinking about a breeding programme, Steve. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, possibly, it's possible. I'm putting my hand somewhere. I don't know where I'm we putting put it. That's what I'm saying. I, 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 Cheeky's not too old to be put to stud. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on as our celebrity gas landlord. My, it's not the first time pleasure. you've actually been a barman, is it? Oh. Many people may remember you as the barman in Men Behaving Badly. Yes, Ken. There you are. There's Ken. There I am. Yeah, just sorting out uh, Ooh, Gary. Look at that shirt. Fantastic. <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> and uh, but uh, of course, you you're not here in the pub with us. You're, we're chatting to you while you're um, cooped up nicely at home. But you yes. are famously teetotal, mm. and have been for what nearly ten years. Fourteen. 
14 years. years. Yeah, well 14 done, this though. Christmas. And I, I celebrate my sobriety birthday on the 29th of December. All right. With Anthony Hopkins. Do you? Yes. And he, he, he was 45 years sober. <laughs> really? What? Yeah. On the 29th of uh, December this year. And Simon Day, who uh, is my old pal from the Fast Show, Simon's sober. And uh, I put on, I'm very grateful and uh, so, so, you know, pleased that I've managed to make 14 years. And uh, I said, you know, and I hope to to continue this this path I'm on. And, and I wish everyone the best of luck who, who, who wants to stop. But a nice post, you know. And hmm. Simon Day sent me a text and said, he went, he went, you poor sod. He went completely overshadowed by Lecter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 45 years. 45 years. But it doesn't matter how many years you've been, you know. It was, uh, was, there, what, was there a catalyst? That, uh, you know, you said 14 years ago. What, you know, was, there, was it just, uh, was it that time of year, the, the Christmas? What, what was the actual thing that made you go? Well, you know, there's a thing the they say is I'm, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, it was just <laughs> oh, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't bring me joy anymore. Yeah. At all, you know. Uh, I just thought, you know, I, I, I can maybe do without this. It's just not the, it, it's not as, the, the greatest thing I've found these days, to be honest, the lockdown for someone who doesn't drink is so much easier. And I give this advice to anyone. I know people are struggling with a drink and a lot of people yeah. are, are drinking a great deal. And the answer is, oh, well, what else is there to do? Yeah, well, yeah, there yeah. is a, there's quite a few things, really. Yeah. And, and I, knew, I do realise people go, oh, what have you got? That, that, can, can you bottle it? And I go, well, Try, you know, try stopping for a bit. You know, dry January didn't really come at the right time. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, that's the truth. And I, I do sympathise with people because 14 years ago, I went into my own lockdown. Yeah. I, I, I was in my own lockdown. So I wasn't happy about it when I stopped at the beginning because I'd see people going, you know, go to the pub and ask me out to go out. And I had to stop that. I had to stop it. So 14 years down the line, I'm very used to kind of being comfortable you know, without going to the pub or going to bars or, or or anything. I mean, I do love me food. I do miss restaurants and things. But um, I don't know whether it is the social, the soccer pubs opening without alcohol. It will be interesting to see how busy they are. And I think the simple reason that the alcohol has been taken out of the equation is, is I think social distancing goes out the window. Yeah, yeah come yeah. here, come Yeah, so that, ca that came yeah. on the news this week, didn't it? That they're, gonna, they're talking about possibly open, opening pubs in April. Uh, uh, minus the alcohol and just maybe having um, soft drinks and food and stuff like that. But uh, we obviously, uh, um, I mean, it's, it's amazing and we have to take our hats off to you whilst we're sat here drinking our guineas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's not wrong you with it. You know what I mean? But we don't want to, we don't want to upset you, John. Because <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. No, no, it doesn't no, we've like seen that. what you look like. It's not to do with booze, this. We know, we've seen what it looks like when you, when you get upset. And, uh, and moving on now to something a little bit different, uh, which is when you um, joined a celebrity um, <laughs> celebrity show that took you into the far-flung oh, reaches... I know what you're going to show. ...of the Northern <laughs> Circle, uh, which is a show that me and you were very, very close to being on together. But let's see you just getting to the point where you just had far too much of 71 degrees north. <laughs> it's all too much for John who absolutely loses it. John, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the eyes and everything at the end, that's just... Great Tell hit. us about that. Did, did, Tell us about I, that. I had really? enough at that point, but it was... It, it, I wouldn't have done that on camera without knowing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, you, you, you're very... Some people... I don't know... All reality shows... You're you very aware that there's cameras everywhere. Yeah. And I thought, oh, do you know what? I might pretend to just go. <laughs> <laughs> but just to exercise the demon that I was, in fact, having a terrible time. Because what we had to do was we had to build the tent from scratch. And it was dusk and there was no light. And I remember that day, I dragged half a dead reindeer in a metal box across the frozen tundra. <laughs> oh, and got no credit for it whatsoever. <laughs> and uh, stop for a break. Stop for a break, because in that, that was our tea that night. So we had to yeah. cook reindeer stew from scratch. On top of that, dragging this box, abseiling down a mountainside with the box on my back, then pulling it through the snow. And I remember the last bit, there was a, a sportswoman on it, Amy something. She's like yeah. a one-woman luge 
Yeah, thing. yeah, she did the bobsleigh. She, she, I, I had a break just to get a breather at the top of the mountain. She put the harness on and dragged the box over the finish line. <laughs> Don't you love the sporting mentality? Oh, oh yeah, and they, really, they, they edit it really well, don't they? So they make it look like they're well, all that, completely reasonable. The voiceover. And... Yeah. Paddy's voiceover it makes it out that I am. Oh, Paddy completely... would be loving it, wouldn't he? <laughs> you know. Paddy was you as well. Paddy would have John Thompson that. completely loses it. <laughs> but um, t- the uh, the look, though, that is quite uh, that's quite sinister, really. I just hope there's some <laughs> casting watching that. <laughs> <laughs> I always said that. Now, then, what, what few people may remember is that you, I say began, I don't know where your career actually began and sprung from but you did used to do voices on spitting image am i right i did that's correct yes i did that was one that was the early days so steve was already doing it coogan we're at drama school and it was a saturday job so it didn't interfere with your uh your work that's one thing about drama school is you don't really like you working professionally i went to manchester poly at the time which man met now manchester metropolitan school of theater so it was then manchester poly and that's got a, a great Pre, uh, alumni, yeah. you know, of yeah, of ex yeah. students, and at the time it was a diploma in theatre. But I, I just kind of—it was a great college because they taught you what not to do. You know, <laughs> yeah. you can't really teach acting. You either can or you can't. And what yeah. they kind of went was, well, you—I don't believe what you're doing. You know, it's they, they used to say you're demonstrating the the emotion. You're yeah. showing me. You don't. I'm not feeling it. I'm not empathising. And that yeah, was a. Yeah, it yeah. was a great thing. And, and it was. A, it was a great college. And, and I, I owe him a debt of thanks. Uh, and Steve was doing voice. He went. And anyway, we, me and Steve met. He was a third year. I was a first year. And we were at a party. And they went. There's this first year. He does impressions. And Steve went. Oh really? Yes, sir. I see. <laughs> okay. All right. Impressions, right? Okay. And I remember he did. Uh, I remember Steve did. Uh, Sean Connery old and Sean Connery young. And I was like, whoa, this is clever. So he kind of went, my name is Bourne, James Bourne. And I hated him a lot older, you know, like he, he was uh, when he was older, but it's completely different. So um, I was like, whoa, that's clever. You know, doing someone through the ages, hearing the sound and the voice change. Steve said, do a tape. That's going back. Look how far back it was. A cassette tape. And I did it. Um, I'm a bit embarrassed because on that tape was uh, Jimmy Savile and Rolf Harris. Oh. But at the time, they yeah, were two they were of my best. Yeah, yeah. They were two they... great voices. They were two of my best, and I miss doing them. But you know, you move with the times. Um, uh, you know, so it is what it is. <clears throat> anyway, at the start, so I did Gaza, which was just a Geordie Crane, like, you know. Just, and he was like, sweet. Oh, it was amazing. Like, you remember that was one sweet? Of the best ones. The... Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, 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 that yeah. Tears flying out. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I did good. Nigel Kennedy, the violinist, you know, FM Villa Monster Monster. He, he was, uh, I can say it quite, so he's, uh, he, I think he was like, he was like, sort of like that, really. And so his agent's gone, oh, Nigel, punk it up a bit, you know, violin's <laughs> yeah, not yeah. the most trendy thing, you know, and he's gone, how about this maestro, you know, Monster Monster, <laughs> or like Gaza, and they've gone, yes, that'll work, and it did. The Four yeah. Seasons with the punk yeah, violinist, yeah. Yeah, 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 so... It was a brilliant move on his part. So I did them, and then he kind of moved through the ranks. At the start, you have to, it's right, it's a passage at Spitting Image. You, you, you started small. I mean, you'd be a potato in a Russian sketch, um, or maybe a talking door. And then you'd just kind of climb the ranks. And I, <laughs> eventually, I got to do Bill Clinton, you know, President of the United States. So that was a, that was a good voice to do. So Well, you also do some of sound effects. Now, I've seen you do stand up many, many times, and mm. one of the noises that you make on there. We were going to play a game here, but I think we'll, we've we literally can, just rattled through. I, most I of them. think you do, you do, we're going to play a game. We'll see who's the best between me and Tom. But I think it'd be great if you could teach us, because I know yeah. you can. There's a particular noise, but two noises I, I want to discuss first of okay. all. Because one I've yeah, discussed yeah. with Tom. The first one is the noise of the rocket launcher. Now. <laughs> This is some. I don't know if you can teach us this, but this is just brilliant. It's the sound of a the, the thing going into the ballistic into the... being placed into the yeah the the anti tank missile yeah launcher. yeah. So yeah, if you imagine I've got a tube here like this, yeah. and the ballistic goes into the top of the tube before you put it over your shoulder to fire. Yeah, the sound is. Oh, you've got to wet your lips. <laughs> <laughs> And you, 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 so there's the imaginary ballistic and there's the, the tube. Yeah. And you go, foo, oh, foo. <laughs> 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 I'm a good, right, Tom, I want to hear him do it. 
Pull. Go on. Pull. Not bad. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Can't do it for that. Um. <laughs> it's kind of. Um. Click the um. bottom, the tongue against the top. But. Um. Boom, 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 boom. That's it. Boom, boom. It's not bad. Boom. I mean, you look amazing. Right. <laughs> Move on to the klaxon then. The klaxons are good. The no, klaxon. Is, it, not, is that it though? Yeah, that's that. That's oh, that. Uh, it's, it, clack, the klaxon. Does it not, does it not get launched? What do you do the launch? <laughs> no. no. Let's we'll say that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll say that. It, it's a bit yeah, too yeah. white noisy. That yeah. it's yeah. not. It, yeah. no, nobody wants to hear a rocket launch, do they? Let's be honest. Not really. No, the missile. No one wants to hear that. Bring on I could the do a quick garage airline in between. You know, oh, you, put the, you put your pound oh. in, and it goes, <laughs> and then you go. <laughs> can, I, can I do mine? Do you have a noise? Yeah, go on. Everyone's got a noise. I, mine, I, I think I do a good go strimmer. On. No, no, I'm sorry. For, for, I'll do Farm One Racing Car first. Farm One Racing Cars. <laughs> that was quite good, isn't it? I think that sounds like someone rubbing their thumb down a giant <laughs> balloon. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did have a strimmer, and I can't remember the strimmer. It's the same noise. Like really, I do one noise. It's a, really it's a, it's a, it's a Formula it's One strimmer. It's a very versatile <laughs> noise to be able to do. I didn't be able to do it. Did you at one point as well? Do, do, teach us the klaxon. Come on, teach, teach us, us the klaxon. klaxon. We all want to know okay. the klaxon. There's a bit of a tale. I used to share a flat with Steve Coogan and Didsbury. Uh, 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 and uh, well, there's a chap there called Gary Snedden who was in Steve's year. He was a very, very funny Scottish guy. And... Uh, on, on a Friday, Saturday night, when people were walking down out of Didsbury Village, he would open the, the top window in this flat, uh, which was right on the edge of the village, and go, <laughs> and everyone would go, what? And I used to cry laughing. It was just brilliant to watch all the drunks go, <laughs> like now, the secret. If you think of what the Americans call rockets, that's the, the not go, not going back to the rocket launcher, a different kind of rocket. Rocket the salad. Yeah. The Americans call it arugula. Now, if you arugula. think it as a as a word, yeah. it is arugula. Did yeah. you see what I mean? Arugula. Yeah. yeah. So you want to go ah uh, ah uh, uh, it's ah uh, ah. Uh, uh, uh. It's the diet way. Go on, you, you do it. Go on, you do it first. <laughs> Arugula. It's good. No, right. ah. that, was a that was good. You good at it? Arugula. I can't. I'm not no, doing that. Not at all. Arugula. I can't get that rattle on it. Of, so basically, Arugula. Arugula's Arugula. the phonetics of it, really. But the sound is three parts. So it's ah, ooh, ah. ah but you've got ooh, it. It's, ah. it's the diet way that's what it's got. <laughs> you can practice, you, honestly, with practice. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you can imagine like one of them cars in Laurel and Hardy been driving down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great sound. Oh, Absolutely that brilliant. is amazing. Brilliant. Listen, we could talk to you all night, but we're actually running, um, we're running just low on time. Uh, one of the things we were asked uh, by some of the people who knew that you were coming in was about one of your much-loved characters, Bernard Wrighton. Yes, Have we yeah. got any of Bernard Wrighton, Jim? Uh, yeah. We're going to play a clip. Oh, OK. We've got a tiny like little a clip of Bernard here. Oh, there's no audio. Oh, no audio. So tell us I'm going to be. I'm going to be. He's, he's kind of coming full circle right, now, isn't he? He's like, a, <laughs> this is kind of how comedy has actually <laughs> progressed. It feels like we all have to be Bernard Wright on nowadays. It's so funny. It's, I think it's time for a resurgence, really. But I, I'm yeah. too, I, it always makes me nervous when things are so PC at the moment. Yeah. Because um, just before we went live, I'd had yeah. the washing machine on doing my coloreds and i wasn't even sure if i could even say that uh, on, on, uh, 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 you know yeah yeah uh, you know what i mean it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, for yeah. bernard um i think it's perfect really the thing about bernard is um it's it's a bit it's always a bit easy to to gig up north because they knew who bernard manning was they knew the working men's clubs were that kind of 
the staple ground of that comic. There weren't that many. There was only like Mike Reed. There was a lot more northern comics doing the clubs. For people, for people who don't know him, he was like a Bernard Manning who was like a, a racist. Old, politically like... correct. He'd, he'd Pol seen the light. He'd had an epiphany yeah. and he thought, no more sexism, no yeah. more racism. I've got to sort it out. So the opening gambit on that act is there's a black fella, a Pakistani and a Jew in a nightclub having a drink. What a fine example of an integrated community, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, sometimes I do gigs where, and, and we're going back uh, 25 years, uh, I would start with, and even the ladies and gentlemen, with the intro, so he'd seen the light and he was, he was PC and he wasn't sexist, wasn't racist. I come on, they go, ladies and gentlemen, Bernard Wright on. And I go, good evening. There's a black fella. And then I go, what about it? And I go, well, give me just a minute. And I wouldn't even get the. They wouldn't let me get to the. Oh my god! I was like, you know what I mean? It's very hard when you do a comedy character as well to come out a character, stay in character, and heckle, respond yeah, to yeah, a heckle. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. one of the things, someone. If I did get a heckle, I only have one put down, which was, listen to that freedom of speech. You don't see that in South America, do you? <laughs> That's great. It was just like it was so limited what I could kind of think. But yeah. what I used to like was messing around. There was, it's easy to do the PC jokes, you know, uh, the obvious targets, sexism, racism, homophobia, all those ones. But it was the kids' jokes I used to like messing about with, like <laughs> the classic joke, cracker type jokes, you know. So, yeah. uh, like, um, I say, I say, I say, I call me dog Isaiah. And the answer is, why do you call your dog Isaiah? And the, uh, and the answer to the joke is, well, one Isaiah than the other. <laughs> but the Bernard version is, I say, I say, I call me dog Isaiah. Why do you call your dog Isaiah? Well, I name all my uh, pets after Old Testament biblical characters. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> I like those ones because they, they're a bit lost on the audience sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And I have that kind of... I like kind of relish that kind of... That kind of like, <laughs> you know, is it's that kind of... Out I was going to say, it's going back to what you were saying before about there's, there's sometimes there is a pleasure in dying on stage. There you is. I mean? there, there, if, it, if it doesn't happen, or, listen, if it happens every week, I, I don't know why people bother, you give up. But yeah. I know certainly for myself, when I've had, and I've had some horrible, usually in Newcastle, funny enough, but I've been yeah. heckled. I've had Preston's a point where they've oh, Is it? Right, well, Newcastle for me, the hyena club twice. And at one point, there's just, the best heckle I ever had was someone who just shouted at the back of the room, halfway through my act, just went, just juggle. <laughs> Which I thought was just a lovely heckle, isn't it? But when I have been out, I've had the point where they're actually want the bane for your blood, and I loved it. And I stood there like that going, I love this because you'd be surprised. And I actually said it on Mike, you'd be surprised to know this doesn't happen very often for me. And they're like, get off, you're crap. Brilliant. But it's weird. At the end of the day, though, it's, I think you relish it because you know it's tried and tested, and, yeah. and it's funny, loads everywhere else. Yeah. It's not yeah. like you're gonna go. Oh, I'm never doing that again. It's yeah, just like it's just like oh, you're having a bad night, you know. But Steve, you told me a brilliant story about uh, when you do a gig, an, an expats gig in Spain, and the fact that the the cocktail barman really likes you, and he doesn't put the blender on it at the end of the punchline. So here we go. <laughs> There's a nun and a rabbi and a priest walking down the street, and. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you, and he said you said to me well, he must like me because he don't put the blender on at the end of the right. that is a true story that I was true, crying was, when you told me that it was dead true it was like a test that the bar staff used to do in that particular bar it was actually in Egypt it was it was in Egypt okay. and the guy it was in it was in the bar and if, if you first gig they do it to everyone and if you don't complain about it they let you off and if they like you they'll, they won't do it but I've seen so many acts who do exactly that. And they just go, <laughs> just a <little laughs> glass washer, everything. And you can oh, see it's them so chuckling away. But that's a true, yeah, it is true that. It that's is so very true. true. Well, Fantastic. speaking of baying for blood, it's yeah. time for us to move on to uh, the, our final part of the show. Now, when, if you'd have seen the summer show, you'd have seen uh, the, uh, the show ended with me and Steve going up against one another in the Steve versus Tom challenge. So we're bringing that back tonight because I lost that space hopper race down the garden, which meant I had to sing the show out. So what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the bar area. John, you're more than welcome to stay with us and watch the carnage that is about to ensue. Okay. And, uh, and heckle, but we're, we're going to move over now 
for the next edition of the Steve versus Tom challenge. You know you said. <laughs> Right, so okay. Dave Flounder's got the rules, I think. Dave, what do right, you have so to do? It's quite simple. The, the name of the game is the quickest to complete the course here. <laughs> You've got a cup there. Flip it, it lands either way up as long as it lands on an end. Then you move on to your flower balls, in which there is no, a... this no, one's right. first. <laughs> yes, you've got your... You've got, <laughs> you've got, you've got, I told you we should have raised this. You've got your buckets with water and you've got a couple of apples in. Okay. Now, those apples are cock, 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 <laughs> cock, cock, cock. Pink ladies. Pink ladies. <laughs> Pink ladies. <laughs> Can you move on to your, 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 your bowls of flour? Okay. There's a witch. There is some berry chocolate, but also a little fishy surprise. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, no. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. The king prawns and the crab stick. <laughs> All right. Wash down with some sperm oil. In the <laughs> I just found this in the pub. <laughs> Are you ready? We're not yeah. almost time. Okay. Ready. Right, ready, steady, go. Oh, come on. Are you, Oh, that, that, I, knew this a bit, I knew this would be the bit that would do me. This is a bit hard. Is there a time limit on this? Uh, I'll oh, give yes. it in a minute. Oh, come on, Royal. Oh, what's Come a... on, Royal. This the should be my thing. This should be oh. Because it either you two celebrities up and coming have a new product coming <laughs> out. It's called I'm YouTube. I'm going for a double flip. I'm going to well, try for a double flip. in a tube. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, yes, those things are moving on. Dunking the apple there. Oh, God. Get your hands behind your back. Get your mouth behind that cock. Stop. Oh, no, no, no. Like, oh, good. Get him down. I can't. Give me a glass. You've got to open oh, wide. Check me here, thing. You're supposed to have the smallest oh, head there, Steve. Oh, and it comes with oh, you've got one. Right, I've got one. You're not going to get two. Oh, oh, get no. yourself in there. <laughs> Grab. <laughs> <laughs> That's it! Oh, I shall move I'm away! Yeah, I'm I'm what have you got there? You've got the chocolate! Get the king prawn! I want you to get the king prawn as well! It's and so fishy! And oh. eat it as well! Oh. Battered prawn! Oh, oh no! The, oh, well done! You've got it there! But the way that it seems is to save yes. a gallon of sperm oh. oil! Good. Oh my god! Good. Oh my god! Well. <laughs> that was horrendous! <laughs> That's oh. all we've got time for. I've got so much flour in my beard. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, John. Thank you, John Thompson. Cheers, everybody.